it's quite the transition where, you know, man from Toronto, <clears throat> I've had a lot of work from then till now. And going into that with Kevin, who not only is a stand up comic, but, you know, a genius with improvisation, and he can make a stand up roast out of anything, anywhere, anytime. And he's one of the quickest guys on his feet of all time. That's why him and The Rock are so funny. That's why, you, why he uh, raced Usain Bolt. Yeah, I see what you did there. there you go. That was good. Quickest guy on his feet. That's Quickest guy on his feet. Very nice. Who he else is, is quick? I am. I am. I'm very fast at times. Not today though. Um, and he, we'd be improvising uh, scenes together. And you know, I'm I'm kind of like the younger, you know, brick on the block and trying to just not do too much improving. I don't want to throw those guys off. But then cut to Kevin's like wildly goes off script, makes it super funny and then just brings it back in. And my job as the kind of like straight man of the the comedy p piece of it is just to like react and have a couple quick moments with them. But that was awesome. It was mm -hmm. so fun. And then like getting to improvise with them and like just jab back and forth on different things was, oh, it was amazing. And it's fun to hold your own and then see those jokes come up in the show. Yeah. And you're like, nice. So I did, I did okay. This is good. This is very good. I mean, <clears throat> literally one of the top comedians in the world, obviously, and like known for his like quick wit. Oh yeah. I mean, I can only imagine how much fun that must've been. Dude, I, there wasn't a single scene that we didn't end up laughing. That's great. At any point, even That's on great. the really bad days at 4 a.m. when we've been shooting nights for two weeks and everybody's having mental breakdowns because you're in a pandemic and right. isolated from everybody and stuck in tents on set. <clears throat> he comes in with a great attitude and is like, all right, let me make a joke and brings everybody's mood back up. And then by the end of any scene, once he's got his, you know, the safety take, he goes off book oh, and just great. starts roasting. And it's so funny. <laughs> oh my God. I, there was, there's a couple moments and they put it in the blooper reel where <clears throat> like me or Woody are, you know, playing the like, forced like very straight characters of like this is this is serious there's no funny bones in our body yeah and i would just hear woody go <laughs> <laughs> and, and as soon as as soon as woody starts breaking i can't hold my face because i'm <laughs> dead eyeing him yeah and i see kevin out the corner of my eye and he's like mm. <laughs> and once he knows he's got you he drives straight after you oh, and all man. he wants to do is just make you crack and it's hilarious I, I watched him make an entire stand-up routine off of a box of oatmeal inside of our storage room fight. <laughs> what? And entertained everybody for an hour and a half. It's amazing. Oh, that's incredible, dude. Quickest guy of all time. It was crazy. And he's- He's so funny. He's super funny and yeah. super nice. Just easy. Yeah. Always brings like positivity and energy to the set where you're just like, this could have been a really rough day. And you've clearly been shooting 12 commercials and doing press for your other 45 projects and slept an hour. And you're still really positive coming on the set. That's really, yeah. cool. that's really freaking awesome. Great <laughs> sign of a leader, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, to, to come in, like you said, energized and positive. <laughs> I mean, that sets the tone like literally, right? I mean. Yeah, a hundred percent. And he did a great job of that. Um, you know, it's always, it is the biggest name on set that becomes the generalized leader and sets the tone for everyone. And he did that in such a, such a cool way, especially during the pandemic. And I don't know everybody remembers the first six months of this were awful. Just some of the worst months of all of our lives. We're stuck inside. We can't see our friends. We're having like breakups and fights with our families. People yeah. aren't talking to each other anymore over, you know, virtue signaling politics and everything else. And just, it was crazy. And <clears throat> to be on set and to have that opportunity and to have Kevin just constantly change the narrative from like something really negative and to be able to go into that positive mindset was, was truly impressive. And I, I really admired that. And I was like, dude, what's your secret? He's like, naps. And then, <laughs> and then, I'm napping right now with I, my eyes open. Literally, yeah. Just taking quick naps every time I blink. That's just, it. just napping right now. Uh, but you would see him as soon as he was done, he would just like sit in his chair or walk back to his trailer and just... And wake back up as soon as they call, hey, Kevin, we need you. He's like, yeah, yeah, ready. <clears throat> and then jokes. That's great. I wish I could do that. Right? Yeah. I, if I, I go out, I'm like, I'm coming back a little out of it, dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to need three Red Bulls before I do this. That's <laughs> right, dude. That was when I did my first press tour ever. Uh, it was for 
Tyler Perry's Boo and Medea Halloween, you know, and mm-hmm. I'd never done a film before, never done press before. And we're going all over the place. I was oh, in yeah. Florida. I was in Atlanta. I was in New York. I was in LA, you know, and it was just nonstop for five days straight or something like that. And I remember seeing Tyler in passing in some of of the sp- like spots we were in in New York. And whatever. He was like, oh, he was yeah. like, hey, what's up? You know, like, oh, now I'm going in. And he did probably five times, 10 times more interviews than I did, right? Right. By the end of the trek, I flew into Atlanta to do Good Day Atlanta. And it was live and we had to be there on set at like four in the morning. We go live at five or something like that. And I'm like, <clears throat> I'm in a different time zone. I haven't eaten in four days. <clears throat> I haven't slept in five days. Exhausted. Like I'm, oh, yeah. It was a different level of exhaustion, right? And I remember going live and luckily I had two of my castmates with me and they asked me a question and I got like halfway through and I was like, what's, what, you know, (laughs) what word am I looking for? Like, I'm like just sitting here like dead face. I'm like, I'm sorry. I, I can't remember. I've been yeah. tired. <laughs> Thankfully, I don't think they asked me another question. After that. <laughs> but the camera I, just zooms in on your face. You're dead eyed staring at a wall. And they're like, like is he dead? Man. Is he okay? And, and for me, was a massive learning experience, right? Because I'm like, I cannot function like this. I need to find a better way. Yeah. So after the fact, uh, I was lucky enough to ask Tyler, you know, who had done way more than what I had just done. And I go, hey, hey man, um, this was been awesome. It's been wild ride. I'm exhausted. And I think I just blew the last <laughs> interview, but it's been great up until now. And I just wanted to know, like, what do you do to get energy? Like, what do you do to like work through it? Mm. And I was expecting, you know, naps or, <laughs> or you got to eat a certain way. You got to sleep this kind of routine. You know, like I was expecting something. Right. And literally he, he goes to me, he just says, you just do it. And in that mm-hmm. moment, I was like, Holy crap. One, I see why Nike's so big. And two, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> from that moment on, I've been able to turn it on because I'm like, you just got to do it. You got to show up. You got to get through it. You got to figure it out. You got to just mm-hmm. dig deep and, and you know, get after it. And, and I've literally ever since then been able to turn on whether it's on set, whether mm-hmm. it's, in, you know, I'm exhausted, whether I don't feel well. Uh, we come and do the podcast. You know, you, you don't feel clear. But yeah. you're like, you, as soon as you sit down, the camera's going, I'm on. It turns it on. Let's go. Yeah. Just get a little dopamine yeah. incentive and just not giving yourself a way out. Burn the ships. Exactly. The excuses go out the door and then <coughs> you know you've got more in you. If you're still breathing, you got more. Yeah. You know, and it's, yeah. it's a mentality, I think, more than anything. So mm-hmm. that was a very uh, great piece of advice. Very simple. Yeah. But it changed the, my path. You know, now I'm like, oh, my workload, I can 10x right now and I'm going to be fine. <laughs> you're like, I won't sleep for a week, but I will s- just do it. I'll just do it. I'll just do it. How was it working with Tyler? Like he's, I mean, Dude. he's obviously one of the biggest filmmakers of all time and created an entire industry. Yeah. You know? And he was my first introduction. So I don't know how many years that's been now. Seven, I don't know, six, seven, maybe eight years mm-hmm. uh, since I started in this industry. And to see even what he's done in that time frame, Yeah. Mind blowing, dude. But honestly, I've never been on a set where- it wasn't filled with like just gratitude, kindness. Like he starts every single day off with a prayer with between everyone. You got 200, you know, grips, camera guys, actors, actresses. Mm-hmm. Like you've got all these people on set. I it like that. Off yeah, it's good. Exactly. With the prayer, with great intention. Um, and everyone on set, dude, everyone that works with him is so awesome. I'm, I'm friends with everybody to this day. Yeah. Anytime I see him, it's like seeing a long lost friend, you know? Um, and cause you go through the trenches too, you know, he, like my first day ever filming, I did 80 pages yep. of my own dialogue. Oh yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. what? The next season I remember going back and I'm <clears> like, <throat> I got the scripts three days before. Nice. I had 50 pages on my first day mm-hmm. and I'm like, I am not even looking at the other scripts. I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> I'm getting through this mm-hmm. right now. So I focused on those 50 pages, right? We get halfway through the day. I'm flowing. Things are going well. Um, they go, oh, we're doing this scene. And I'm like, what? What, what, what scene is that? Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> and they, they're like, yeah, this scene. And I'm like, what? I was like, I started looking at it. It was 15 pages that I led every other line. And oh. I'd never seen it before because I only focused on the 50 pages I thought I had to do that day. So no, I, no one told me, at least not, I, maybe I missed it. I don't know. But I remember- and, It's a and, lot of pages. And we were block yeah. shooting, right? It was a lot of pages, 15 pages on top of the 50 I already had, right? Yeah. So 
we were block shooting out the farmhouse that I was shooting, I was working on that day just to get it all done, move on. That's how Tyler works. He can shoot a whole season in two weeks, no problem. Jeez. 22 episodes or ours was only yeah. eight, so it was a shorter frame, but it's still. Um, and I remember him walking up and I'm like, Tyler, I gotta be honest. Like, I don't got it. Like, I've never seen this. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, okay. He looked over, he's like, you see that bathroom over there, that porta body? It was not even a hundred yards, maybe 75. He's like, I'm going to walk to that. And I'm going to walk back and I want you to have it ready. I was like, okay, <laughs> just do it. <laughs> exactly. Dude. I was like, all right, <laughs> give me a script. <laughs> and so I started going through it, dude. I read it as many times as I could. Oh yeah. Ran it, did anything I could in that short amount. That's a couple minutes, dude. Yeah. It wasn't a long time. Come back, literally roll cameras, did the entire scene, one take, and we moved on. How crazy is it that we every day are capable of stuff like that, but we do not hold ourselves accountable to that crazy of a standard because we're like, oh, it's really hard. There's no way that's going to happen. Yeah. But you do it. Yeah. You, you find something in the bottom of your soul and you just take it. Yeah. And you're like, somebody else is going to take this if I don't do this it's right now. Exactly my thoughts. I was like, I'm going to get fired. Yeah. If I, and I love this job. <laughs> it's my first real job. How do I keep my job? Thank you for watching. Don't forget to drop a like if you enjoyed the video. And subscribe and hit the bell for a whole lot more to come. Thanks for tuning in to Studio 22.